I solved over 300 lead code problems before landing my job at Google. But here's the crazy part. Half of what I was doing was a waste of time. Most of what I thought mattered was completely wrong. Today, I want to tell you the five lessons that would have saved me months of studying. If you want to finally learn data structures and algorithms so you can pass tech interviews, here's what you need to know. Lesson one, don't get hung up on difficulty labels. You know those easy, medium, and hard labels on lead code? Yeah, ignore them. They're worthless. After completing hundreds of lead code problems, I have learned that difficulty is subjective. It depends entirely on what problems you've seen before. There have been times when I've solved a hard problem only in a few minutes without much trouble because I studied a similar problem before. And on the flip side, I'll be the first to admit that I've been absolutely destroyed by an easy problem because I've never seen anything like it before. The point is, don't put weight into the difficulty labels that you see on problems. You shouldn't beat yourself up if you struggle on a problem labeled easy. Also, come to think of it, who even decides the difficulty labels on leak code problems? If it's easy for one person, it doesn't mean it'll be easy for everyone. If you obsess over difficulty labels, you'll just psych yourself out. After teaching thousands of software engineers, data structures, and algorithms, here's what I know. The fear that holds most learners back is the fear that they're slower at learning algorithms than others. In other words, they think that being good at algorithms is only meant for those who are naturally gifted. And they are not one of those naturally gifted people. But this is a lie. I'm here to tell you that if you have a difficult time with a problem labeled easy, well, that's okay. Studying data structures and algorithms is already hard. Don't make it harder by judging yourself against arbitrary difficulty labels. Focus on your own journey. Don't compare yourself to others based on what they find easy or what you find hard. Every journey is unique. If you focus on yourself, improving a little bit every study session, you'll get better. And speaking of difficulty, lesson two, your first 30 problems will be the hardest. When you start learning data structures and algorithms, it's going to be brutal. The first 30 problems you attempt will feel slow and frustrating. And yes, it's going to be challenging even if you chose problems labeled easy. That's because you have zero experience. In those first 30 problems, you lack all context. You don't know what to expect, you don't know what solutions are possible, or if you're like me, you probably won't even understand what the question is asking. I call these first 30 or so problems the bootcamp phase. The bootcamp phase is painful, but it's painful because it's where your brain is wiring in the fundamentals. Most people slow down or quit in the bootcamp phase because they feel so hopeless. But in reality, what they should do is stick with it. When you're new and completing your first 30 problems, you have to discover what works and what doesn't through mostly trial and error. But this is a good thing. Why is the bootcamp phase a good thing, you ask? It's a good thing because of this fact. It will never get harder than this. The beginning is the hardest part. And since the beginning of the learning process is the hardest, once you get through this beginning bootcamp phase, things will get better. After those 30 or so problems, you'll gain momentum and really start to see the recurring patterns. The bootcamp phase is like pushing your bike up a steep hill. It's a pain to walk up the hill with your bike, but once you're at the top of the hill, you get to ride down it. So my advice to you is to look forward to pushing through those first 30 or so problems. On the other side of that struggle, it's going to be all worth it. Lesson three, fail as fast as possible. This one changed everything for me. I used to think that I had to solve every problem on my own before looking at the solution. And when I got really stuck on a problem and had to look at the solution, it felt like I failed the problem. To me, looking at the solution was like surrendering and giving up. But here's what I learned after getting much more experience. I was spending way too much time attempting the problem on my own. It was a huge waste of time. Instead of staring blankly at the screen for an hour, I should have been more productive and looked at the solution to learn from it. Here's what you need to know. There are some problems that you will not be able to solve on your own. You won't know how to solve them unless someone shows you how first. Especially in the beginning, you're going to need someone to explain the solutions to you. So don't be stubborn. There's no reason to avoid using resources like the solution, explanation, or video walkthrough. Here's what I recommend. When confronted with a new problem, give it an honest shot for 15 minutes and then check the solution. The faster you fail, the faster you'll learn. You didn't decide to study so you can protect your ego. 
Remember that you decided to study because you wanted to improve your skills. So don't make yourself feel bad if you have to look at the solution. The key is to learn from the solution so that you can solve that problem on your own in the future. Lesson four, focus on solutions, not problems. If you spend any time on LeetCode, you know that there are many solutions for any given problem. It can feel pretty overwhelming. I'm here to tell you that not all solutions are worth your time. Here's what I mean. Some solutions are so specialized that they're only applicable to this one specific problem. On the other hand, there are other solutions that are widely relevant. These are the good solutions. A good solution is one that not only solves this problem at hand, but can be also applied to many other problems. These solutions are pure gold when it comes to studying for tech interviews. They give you the most coverage for problems that could be given on your interview while also having the lowest study time investment. You want to study the least number of patterns that solves the most number of different problems. Don't make the mistake of spreading yourself too thin. You cannot memorize every solution for every problem. Trust me, I have lived this mistake. I spent hours studying a new hyper-specific pattern to solve a particular problem, only to never use that pattern ever again. And because I never had the chance to apply that pattern again, I don't even remember it. It was worthless. You need to focus on the commonly occurring solutions, not every shiny new solution that crosses your path. I failed my Google interview twice, but once I made a conscious decision on what not to study, I was able to double down on the concepts that actually matter. Focusing on everything is focusing on nothing. Just because someone posted it on LeetCode doesn't mean it's worth your study time. If you want to learn exactly what I studied to land my software engineering job at Google, you should check out my complete data structures and algorithms course at structy.net. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. There I'll teach you all the patterns that you'll need to impress on tech interviews. The best part is I've designed this course specifically for beginners. Unlike LeetCode, we'll start at the basics and slowly increase the difficulty so that you never miss a step. You'll learn using professional animations and walkthroughs that are available for every single problem. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Studying only the important solutions is a great way to optimize your study time. But if you make this next mistake, you might undo all the progress you just made. Lesson five, don't stare at the code, draw the algorithm. If you can't visualize it, then you definitely can't code it. Writing code without being able to picture the algorithm is like building a house without a blueprint. You can try, but it'll end up a mess. You'll have a much easier time if you have a picture of what you're trying to implement. Like they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, or in this case, it's worth a thousand lines of code. The visual picture is more beneficial for your understanding than the code is. For example, here's the code for a breath first search through a grid. And now here's the diagram of a breath first search through the grid. Which one really explains what BFS is? This applies to all algorithms. Every algorithm for every data structure can be visualized. Array algorithms, tree algorithms, stack algorithms, graph algorithms, dynamic programming, and so on. After spending a lot of time studying algorithms, I learned that once I establish a clear picture in my head, the code almost writes itself. The cool part about this is that you don't have to draw out or see the picture every time you write the code. That would be kind of annoying. I found that studying the visual diagram of an algorithm only a few times works wonders. If I'm able to study a clear diagram a few times, then I'll be able to picture the algorithm even if I need to write it later on in an interview. It's way easier to recall a diagram than the lines of code. But this only really works if you actually have a clear diagram to study. Messy marker on a whiteboard doesn't really help. It needs to be clear. If you're interested in using clean visuals to enhance your understanding of data structures, then I recommend you check out my course at structy.net. There are crafted animated visuals for every single algorithm, so the concepts really stick. Link down in the description if you're interested. Data structures and algorithms are so difficult to learn because they're so abstract. What I mean is algorithms are just ideas and mental models. So they don't exist in the physical world. You can't really see them or touch them in your everyday life. And because you don't really get to interact with algorithms in the real world, you'll have a hard time building a mental image of them. 
unless of course you use some clear visual aids to help. That's why pictures and diagrams are so valuable. I'm Alvin. Teaching people data structures and algorithms is all I do all day long. If you're interested in hearing more tech interview tips from me in the future, then hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.